Turning our attention back to the markets, the conventional wisdom holds that the Republican gains in last week's election are going to be good for banks because one of the GOP's objectives is rolling back financial regulation. Well, don't bet on it. Jason Tyler, director of research at Aerial Investments and a specialist in financial, says banks may face more uncertainty with the Republicans in charge of the House than they did under the Democrats. Ariel has $5 billion in assets, and Jason sits on the firm's investment committee. He's usually in Chicago, but here with us today in New York. Jason, it's great to have you. Let us talk about this, because it really defies the conventional wisdom, the idea that a Republican-controlled House may be worse for banks than a Democrat-controlled house. How does that work? Well, I, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I, I think we're going to have a situation where Republicans are going to be pushing back on a lot of the regulation that came on board, and we're not really sure where that's going to come from. And so without that certainty of seeing exactly what their agenda is around financial service and reg reform, I think a lot of the banks are going to be nervous for a while. Do you think there is the risk of some rogue elements, let's call it, inside the Republican Party that may want to get some things done? that don't actually jibe with what the bank CEOs would like to see done? Yeah, and I, you know, I even caught what you and Deirdre were talking about earlier this morning and how you know, a lot of the Republicans pushing back really hard at the Fed in general and saying we shouldn't, the Fed should be revamped dramatically. And so I think... Ron Paul, Rand Paul, for example. Right. Jim and DeMint. Exactly. And so I think we're going to you know, see a lot of the Republican Party trying to, um, trying to do something so that they can create an agenda that they can feel like they've uh, benefited their constituents. And they ran on an, on an overall platform platform of pushing back very hard at regulation that took place earlier. And does the concern for investors effectively boil down to one word, uncertainty? Yeah, it does. And, you know, investors obviously love, particularly in financials, they love to see constant cash flow. They, they want to be able to predict earnings and where they're going very well. Regulation can change the game dramatically in financial services. And I think that's a big part of the reason why you're seeing financials still holding back a little bit, not trading at the multiples that you and I have seen them trade at historically. Well, one of the big reasons that we're hearing so much about the Fed and regulating it from people like Rand Paul is QE2, quantitative right. easing. Yeah. We got it last week, or at least they told us what's going to happen. Are you surprised with how things played out for banks? Stocks? I was shocked. I Why? was I Why? was really surprised to see uh, to see banks move the way they did. Because at the end of the day, uh, the banks still should be moving based on whether or not we can get good job growth, whether or not credit quality is going to improve a lot. And I, I think even though the Fed's trying really hard, they're doing all the right things, trying to get interest rates down, at least effective rates, even lower than where nominal rates are. I don't think it's going to have that much of an impact on the the true fundamentals of banks. Is it not possible though that investors may perceive the Fed as willing to move? Or, uh, on things like dividends and buybacks now that QE2 is behind it, and maybe that's one of the reasons we see stocks moving? Yeah, even I mean, if you look at what happened that day that the rumors started to percolate around dividends coming, uh, you know, you saw 5% moves in companies like J.P. Morgan. Okay, I understood that, a Wells, but Bank of America moving 5 almost 6% that day, and the bank's still, I think, going to have to figure out how to raise more capital to meet Basel. So the thought that dividends are going to be a big component of the return for that stock in the near term. I just, I didn't see it. Well, that raises an important question, though, for somebody like you. You're here in New York talking to management. Yeah. I know it's a big thing for you. When you look at the different banks, J.P. Morgan versus Bank of America versus Northern Trust versus Citigroup, et cetera, what are the priorities for you right now? What is the rationale for investing in banks? Yeah, we always talk about the plan to win. Who is the management team that can develop and establish a plan to win? And, you know, this is an environment where you have to have a leader that can see the future well. And, you know, I was looking back, I just finished reading this book, Clutch, that talked to, they chronicled the difference between how uh, Jamie and how, um, and, and how folks at B of A handled 2008. And, J.P. Morgan was the third largest bank in the country and was significantly less in value compared to Citigroup and B of A. And then you fast forward two years exactly, and it's substantially larger than both. And so even though everybody talks about the importance of management, the market still doesn't, uh, doesn't value these high management quality firms better. And so we're looking for the teams that can see, can see the future and, aren't willing, and are willing to go against the grain when they should. All right, Jason, it's always a great thing when you're able to join us here in New yeah. York, and we look Thank forward you. to talking to you and seeing you soon. Thanks, sir. Jason Tyler of Aerial Investments with his rationale for why you should buy banks. It all comes down to management. Now